All right, so I'm going to, this video is going to show you the steps on how to create your composite portrait, which is project number three. Um, I'm just going to, if you haven't, go ahead and download the agenda, um, whether it's the Word document or the PDF, so you can follow, follow along and make notes. I will type in the notes as we go for some of these blanks. Um, the first thing you're going to do is go ahead and open your Lightroom catalog, and you're going to um, import your pictures. Whether that means you're going to import the ones I provided if you didn't have a chance to make some portraits, which is okay because... There's, it's hard to get into the studios at this time, so if you have the images, if not, go ahead and use some of these samples I've given you. Um, once you get them in there in the develop module, you're going to go ahead and um, do your global adjustments. So let me just go through those steps. Um, so I'm going to, let me bring the highlights down, any global things, I'm going to bring up some, some of the clarity. Um, go ahead and apply your sharpening and as well as lens correction. So you're going to do your global adjustments. Um, before I go to the next step, I did skip one step. Um, I am going to make a contact sheet. And I want, even if you're using the pictures I've supplied, go ahead and make a contact sheet just for the sake of practicing making contact sheets because I don't think we've done that enough in this class. So go ahead and click on the print module. I'm going to select all my pictures, which is Command A for um, uh, select all. Um, I want to make sure under Lightroom Templates that 4x5 is selected and that if um, Guides is turned on, just turn that off because I think it looks better. We're going to click on Printer. Um, it's going to open up this menu and then click on PDF, Save as PDF, and then you can go ahead and save these to um, the desktop or wherever you want to save them so that you can access them again to turn them in um, for me, because you will submit a contact sheet as well as your final edited file with layers. I still needed to have layers, so um, we will figure out that as well. Um, so here is the, um, st once you've done your global adjustments, you're going to go ahead and apply them to um, the pictures that you want. So let's say I wanted to pick this picture. Um, whoops, let me. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sync my adjustments. Um, so that they're synced in as well. Um, and then you're going to um, right click or control click to um, edit in and open as a smart object in Photoshop. It's really important that you do not skip this step because that's how I can check whether or not you've done your global adjustments. And also it's best practice for editing to um, edit them as smart objects. So um, this will take a second, but I already have some pictures in loaded in Photoshop so let me just see if I can get to Photoshop real quick it will let me it's thinking alright so yeah it opened but I am I'm actually going to use my picture I'm going to use this picture go ahead and close this one and I'm going to composite me and Chinook who was a student from last semester together so the first thing you have to decide is which one do you want to be the base, like which one is where you're going to add things. I think I'm going to keep Chinook as the base. So I'm going to, with the move tool, I'm going to select my layer of my, my picture, bring it, um, activate the one with Chinook and just drag it over on top of his. I did crop this one um, so we can notice that's a little bit smaller than the picture underneath it. So um, what I want to do is I want to lower this layer opacity because I kind of want to start matching up my features with Chinook's features. So I'm just lowering it so I can kind of see both underneath. Um, and then I'm going to resize this layer because it's definitely smaller. And the nice thing about being a smart object is it's going to refer back to the original size. So that would be very helpful. Um, so this is on your your first blank. The um, to resize a layer, the shortcut for that is Command T, which is the free transform. So this is your um, your first blank on your lecture notes, which I misspelled transform. Okay, so I'm going to come back to Photoshop, and I'm going to hit Command T on my layer here, and I'm going to get a little bit bigger, and I'm going to go ahead and just um, start to increase myself. I'm also rotating it to kind of line up line up my features line up the eyes if it's possible um, I think I have to go a little bit bigger so let me see that's that's not too bad 
Um, when you think you've got it pretty much lined up, some things aren't going to match up perfectly, and that's okay. Like that's that's kind of the challenge of this assignment. It's also the challenge to miss to match skin tones. All right. So the first thing, um, once I do that, I'm gonna my top layer. I'm gonna return that layer opacity to 100. And now what I want to do is mask. And what is masking? So why do what I mask? Why don't I just you know copy delete? erase things well because that's very destructive so what is masking masking is basically hiding or showing parts of a layer that or layers that you are combining in Photoshop so it's it's non-destructive editing it's part of non-destructive compositing it's what we're going to be doing for the rest of the semester for sure um, let me just turn some notification off um, and uh, yeah so another blank you have black equals black hides so when you are masking um, when you're using the black you're hiding part of the picture and white white shows so you know kind of think of it like the way I like to think of masking is like we're working with shadows and highlights so anything in the shadows is usually hard we can't see it's hidden and stuff that's out in the light is white we can see so um, which key do you use to toggle between the two when you are masking is the X key. So let me go back and go back into my Photoshop. And let me go ahead and what I'm going to do, oh, actually I'm going to give you one more blank before I actually do that. I'm going to give you the blank for that step. Um, so you're next with the top layer selected, I'm going to option click on the vector mask icon. Um, so let me go ahead. And the vector mask icon on the bottom of the layer palette. And what's going to happen is um, that is going to, so this down here, I'm going to click on my layer. This is how I can add a layer mask, but I'm going to option click on it. And if you notice, it added um, a black mask over that layer. So that, the nice thing about that is now all I have to do, I'm going to select the paintbrush, which is the B tool. So select the paintbrush. Um, and you can see white is already selected. Um, I'm going to go ahead, yep, my hardness is turned down. I'm going to increase the size. Um, but I am also using, um, I'm also going to change the brush. I'm going to change the brush to one of these brushes. Um, I can use the bracket key to also change the size, or I am using um, a Wacom tablet. So I could, well, it's only going to let me do the auto scroll. So never mind, I'll use the bracket keys. All right, so now with making sure my mask is selected, white is on top, I'm going to come in here and I am going to pass these way low. I'm going to go ahead and start adding my features back in. So here's my eyes, but you can see that I went too far and now we have three eyebrows. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. I hit the X key so it toggles between adding black on top and I'm just going to go ahead and um, take out that extra, oop, what back on top, hide his eye a little bit. So it just kind of comes a little finesse. Now you can tell my eyes don't quite line up with his. Um, my face might have been a little bit tilted, so I'm just going to rotate um, rotate that a little bit and try to match it up a little bit. And that, that looks pretty darn good, um, pretty, pretty spot on. Now let's say I wanted to use my hair. Um, at any point, if you hit, um, let's see here. Nope, that's not what I want to do. Um, let's see. I um, control click. If I disable, um, dis you know, turn off the mask, I can see my picture on as this. Let me enable it. So let me go ahead with the white brush. I'm going to make my brush pretty big, and I'm going to see if I can start adding my hair to this. So I'm going to use kind of Schnook's body, but my hair, and I'm just going to paint it in. Um, you know, roughly and see where I'm at. So obviously I'm getting some extra stuff in there. Um, that's very entertaining. Um, I'm actually kind of adding a little bit more over here of my face um, just to make it look like it's blending a little bit more. Um, but I've started to get some extra things in here. So let me go ahead and just kind of bring back part of Chinook's hoodie, get rid of this part. Um, that is pretty entertaining. That looks pretty good. Um, and if I want to, I can turn this off and we can see what part is me and what part is Schnook. And I might come in here and actually just make my brush a little bit smaller. 
Um, it's not what I wanted to do. Um, but click on this and maybe. Oh, that's a highlight. That's what that is. I was like wondering what that was. And maybe just bring in this part and just. Um, now, obviously, my hair over here is kind of interesting, right? Because you can see the blackness that happened. Um, one great thing you can do is if you ever use the select and mask part of Photoshop, um, what it will do is it will kind of um, show you what you know what you're masking. So we can see the part that I'm bringing in. And why I bring this in is I can add this tool right here. So this is my quick selection brush. That is my refined edge brush. And why I'm bringing that in is what it will do is it will go through like things like hair and it will start to find the edges and mask. Basically make a nice clean mask of that without only showing the hair. So what I can do is I can just brush over the hair um, and let's see. and if I hold down the option key I can subtract. No, actually no, I would do want to. And that might help make the hair in that transition over there look a little bit more realistic. So once I feel like I have a selection that I like, I can go ahead and hit OK and we could take a look at it. Um, again, it accidentally added in my, so that's pretty easy fix. I just have to um, put the black on top and I can erase this out real quick um, and kind of clean that up. So, um, so far it's, it's looking pretty good here over here if I look closely at the eyes they're not quite matching up a little bit so one thing I am going to do is if you have it where a feature doesn't match up and you need to make it into a new layer I am going to go ahead and um, select the marquee tool I'm going to make a selection of my eyes and I'm just going to go ahead and hit command J and what that does is it does just make a layer that is my eyes um, and I'm going to turn this off for just a second I'm going to turn off my layer opacity just so I can try to match up my eyes with Chinook. And it looks like, do free transform, rotate a little bit. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but enough where at least it's covering up his eyes a little bit better. Go ahead and hit enter. Um, increase my layer opacity again. Turn this on. And I'm also going to go ahead and um, option click on layer mask and add that as... Um, as black and then I'm going to come in here with the paintbrush with white and just bring back those eyes again. When I turn on, I'm going to turn this layer off, I am going to go ahead and um, click on this one and cover up those eyes just so I don't have like multiple eyes. So, so like this is my hair layer and now here is my eyes layer and I kind of said that funny. So, but let me clean this up for a second. Let me make my brush a little bit smaller and kind of clean that up. Um, not too bad. That looks, I think, a little bit more realistic. Um, but if you notice, we do, one thing is happening and why I purposely picked this is Chinook and I are two very different, um, skin tones. Like he's a little bit more yellow. I'm a little bit more red. And how do I, how do I blend those skin tones? Um, I, a couple things, um, I can do is spend a lot of time finessing this. Um, like right here, you see I'm purposely leaving that because I want to blend that. So um, basically, um, oh, so going back to your election notes, um, if you need to separate later, which is what I just did, um, here let me type in some notes so you have some notes for that. So um, you can use, for making a selection, you can use the marquee tool or the lasso tool. Either one of those would make a selection. Um, the keyboard shortcut that allows you to copy a selection into a new layer is Command J. Um, and then I do recommend renaming that layer and adding a layer mask to it. Um, if you wanted for hair blending tips, which I just did that, you would select and mask uh, the Refine Edge brush. I recommend changing the mode to Overlay, which is what I did, and that's the V key. Um, and then you want to make sure, and then the Refine Edge brush is the brush I use to do that, which is also the R key. Whoops, just R. Um, and then you want to make sure to output it as a layer mask. So um, that way it is. 
Um, and then with the another interesting um, with the brushes uh, lower the brushes opacity um, to 20 to 40 percent is another way that you can blend hair and paint over the mask so um, and then how to fix hair fringes or change the color of the background I'll show you guys in that one in a yeah I guess I'll just go ahead and show you those steps probably helps if I pay attention so for instance if you notice when I was masking I purposely whoops purposely left part his hair and my hair and his hair is definitely darker than mine so if I wanted this to blend a little bit more I'm actually going to go ahead and make a new layer um, above my subject. I want to make this into a clipping mask so that, actually, I'm going to make it above this. I'm going to make it above him layer because that's the layer I want to blend a little bit. So whatever layer you want to blend, make sure this layer, I'm just going to call this hair color. I'm going to make it into a clipping mask, which is command, and let me, let me bring back up my Word document so that you guys can um, get those notes. Okay, so um, to make into a clipping mask is Command Option G. Um, I'm going to rename this layer hair color. Um, with the brush tool, I'm just going to go ahead and, and go through the blank so you guys can make the notes and then I'll show you the steps. So with the brush tool selected, I'm going to select the color of the hair I want to copy. Lower the opacity to 30%, which is your next blank. Paint over the hair that doesn't match. Um, I can also use the clone stamp to do this, but I want to make sure it's sampling current and lay below layer so I'm not sampling all of it. Um, and I can also change the layer's blending mode to, to make it blend more. And overlay, which is the last blank in this step three on your notes, works very well. So let me go ahead and go through, actually show you these steps in Photoshop. Um, so the first thing, to make any cl clipping mask, I'm going to hold down Command Option G. And the reason why I'm making this into a clipping mask or why it works is I don't have to worry about um, doing any masking. I can basically, I can go paint over the lines as they would say and it's not going to affect, it's only going to affect the area what. So let me go ahead and pick like my hair color, maybe right there, a little bit darker. Maybe I'll pick more of this color. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select OK, lower my opacity of my brush to like 30%, make it a little bit better, bigger, and I'm just going to go ahead and paint. Now, the great thing is, it is painting over there because um, that that layer is still part of the layers being seen. But if you notice, it's protecting, it's protecting my layer above it. So you can see it's just affecting that layer. And you know, if that also seems like it's too much, I can. This is where I might want to change the blending mode to overlay, and and I could even lower. And actually, I think that color is probably a little bit too dark. Let me go ahead and also select a lighter color on my hair. And just kind of brush over that a little bit. Oh, that looks better. Yeah. Um, I can also, if it feels like it's too much, I can also come in here and just lower this layer a little bit and just make it look a little bit more blending. It kind of becomes, at this point, an interesting guessing game. And you're kind of playing around with a lot of stuff just to make it feel like it's it's realistic. And that's and I also notice I have a double little doubleness going over here. So let me just come in here and clean that up just a little bit. Um, Nice thing also when you're doing, if you feel like you've done that, um, sometimes going in with a lower paste brush, a brush just lets you kind of paint a little bit in to blend it in more. Okay, so let me go back to um, your skin tone blending modes tips. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my top layer. I'm going to go ahead and make a new blank layer. Um, let me go ahead and give you guys the blanks for skin toning blending tips. So new blank layer, I'm going to rename this layer Skin or Skin Tones. Um, I want to make sure this layer is the uppermost top layer because you might end up having to blend multiple layers. Um, I'm going to select the brush tool and that is the B tool. Um, on the color picker, I want to select sk the skin tone I want to blend. Again, I want to lower the brush's opacity to less than 20%. And the reason you want to do that is you want to, you really want to like layer it. Slow layering will really help. Um, I can use a clone stamp and a healing brush, but this is, um, when I want to do this one, I do want to make sure that I have all layers sampled. So sample all layers, because I'm blending everything together. Um, I can also go back and erase, which is your last blank, erase any mistakes that I made. So let me go ahead 
and show you those steps for that part. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to rename this skin tones. Um, and whoops. Come over here. Let me select the brush tool. Um, I, I'm going to select this skin tone a little bit. I'm probably going to have to go in and um, select different parts because if you notice, um, this is darker, but this over here is a little bit lighter. So let me go ahead and make that about 20%. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm just going to go ahead and start painting over it. You can notice it's starting to disappear, which is pretty nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select a little bit of a lighter layer and I could also, actually let me do this. Um, yep, I'm just going to do that. And try to mimic the surrounding areas. I'm just going to have two different skin tones since it looks like I kind of have to do two. Um, maybe toggle to the lighter one just to lighten this part up and you can kind of see like the before and after and it I'm just trying to blend it and I think I went too far um, with right here so I can select the eraser tool now um, and I can erase this part just to bring it back up um, that's pretty strong let me go ahead and again lower this opacity and just kind of go kind of um, makes it blend a little bit better um, and maybe this is when I'd want to bring in the clone stamp so um, well, so it says all layers and maybe I just want to kind of clone in some of his skin over it just to make it blend a little bit more um, I'm going to lower that opacity just a little bit let's see here because you can see brush strokes and I'm not a oh, I get to go over here yeah this is not it's getting there I think I went a little too far with that so let me just erase those, make them to what they were. Ooh, some fun things are happening. So let me go ahead and select the brush tool. Just paint a little bit over. There we go. So that's definitely look a little bit better. I have a line right here that I want to clean up. So I'm just going to make my brush a little bit smaller. See if I can paint that in. Um, nope, I do not like that. So let me undo that. Um, let me try the healing brush. Um, again, sample all layers and just see if I can. Sometimes just going with the healing brush over areas. Nope, that did not work. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So let me grab some of the clone stamp again and just just try to. The nice thing also is it's kind of copying his skin tones. That's just a little too much. So let me try. Let me try the eye. Actually, I want to try right there. I want the brush to be smaller. So this is going to become like you're finessing a lot. I, I prefer you guys to take time. I prefer you guys to really blend it and make it look a lot better. Um, let me put the, let me just try to darken it. Ah, there, that looks better. Just need to darken it a little bit. Um, and let me clone that area. There we go. Now that's looking a lot better. So take your time when it comes to blending things. Um, this right here, I think, is my part of my face. So I'm just going to come over and lighten it a little bit. Um, I actually might just clone stamp that. So kind of, yeah, uh, make my brush a little bit bigger. Let me grab, let me select this area. I just want it to, I don't want it to seem as visible. So sometimes going over things um, a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and see if also this will work too. Yeah, that looks better. I'm blending it. So, um, so so far the eyes it looks pretty good. I've done my hair, but also here you see my forehead. His forehead and my forehead are definitely two different tones. So I'm actually going to paint. Um, let me bring the brush back up. Uh, the lighter colors there, and let me go ahead and just try to um, make. See if I can bring in that color. Make his 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 my part of the forehead look a little bit more like his. Let's see what happens if I make it look darker. Nope, darker is not a good choice. Um, let me actually, let me take a sample of this part of his forehead. Yes, that's going to look more blended. Um, and then see what happens if I just do kind of this line area to kind of blend it. Nope. Command Z sometimes does not work. But I also, whew, notice that you can see some of these hairs um, let's see aha uh -huh. are they their hairs on his face so I'm just gonna come in with the clone stamp oops 
and just go ahead and kind of actually let me go in with the healing brush and see if I can kind of eliminate those hairs because I don't want th those are random hairs that make no sense I think they're from his head um, there we go copy some of that take a sample of his skin tones sometimes you just kind of have to add a transition um, there we go just to make it look blended so it's a little bit more like we have the same kind of skin tones um, so I do want you guys for this assignment to at least do three things um, eyes hair and a third thing so let's see maybe I will try to see what my um, uh, adding my mouth to his so oh, gotta increase my opacity all the way up um, oh man that that looks amazingly weird so I'm gonna go ahead and make a selection I'm gonna make this its own layer because um, I kind of feel like the hair is in a good place so command J um, or actually it just I think it just copied that layer so let's go deselect um, and let me go ahead and see if I turn this layer off for a second let me go ahead and brush back um, his mouth real quick it's real quick brush back all right now I'm gonna turn this layer on and what would happen if I did I just make it a new black layer nope Nope. Okay. So I'm just going to go in on this layer. I'm just going to delete that layer mask for a second. And now I'm just going to add a new black layer. I think that will be a faster. Yep. And now I can come in and just um, add my mouth back in kind of roughly. And then I can move it down to an area that's a little bit believable. Hmm. Let me lower the opacity of that layer. So you can kind of see a lot of finessing, oops, a lot of finessing can happen here. Let's see here. My mouth is a little different than his, which is okay. I just really want to make sure I'm covering up his mouth. So let me increase that layer opacity again. And I'm going to clean up the mask a little bit. Just so that it looks a little bit more realistic. Um, Maybe I'm going to bring in some of his top hair, his little mustache that he has going on. And I could I could just say I want to keep my bottom lip in his, in his top lip. That might be a little bit easier in the blending. I think I need to make my mouth just a little bit bigger. So let me come in here and just make it a tidge bigger so it kind of fits over a little bit better. Man, that looks awesome. I'm just going to bring part of my lip back in. And man, whew, I'm looking amazing in this picture. Um, whoops. Let me just, there we go. So um, I'm just kind of doing this quickly just so you guys can see. But again, I would um, clean this up um, and make it blend a lot better. This Chinook and I would not make awesome babies. Um, I'm actually, but you can come in and, and blend those skin tones a little bit more using on that skin layer, skin tone layer, I can come in and blend that a little bit more, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to sharpen because I want to make sure you have that part of the video in here. So, um, sh sharpening with smart filters. The nice thing about using smart filters is again, this allows you to, um, let me go to our notes so you can make notes. Um, the advantage is this, is this is it can allow you to re-edit the filter. So if you're going to be um, resizing your file a lot, like you want to get it ready for print and then you're going to get it for the web, it's nice to have this as a smart filter because then it doesn't matter as you resize your file, you can then adjust the filter because when you sharpen, it's going to it's it's resolution based. Whatever you have the resolution of the file set to, it's going to um, affect it. The disadvantage is, is it does increase file size. So that is one down step. But let me go ahead. Um, the steps to create a smart filter, the first thing you're going to do is you want to create a composite layer. And there's four keys to create a composite layer. It's Command, Shift, Option, E. Um, and what happens is a composite layer is, is it basically 
is it's going to copy all your layers into one now. So this is my composite layer, and I'm just going to call this Sharpen. So go ahead and rename that layer to Sharpen. Under Filter, you don't want to skip this step, otherwise it's not a smart filter and it's just a sharpened layer, um, and you will you will lose some points. So um, this converts it into that sharp filter layer, um, and then um, I have I'm going to go through um, three different sharpening ways. Um, and you just have to really pick one of these. The first one is sharpening with um, unsharp mask. So you're going to go to sharpen, unsharp mask, filter, and you're going to select unsharp mask. Um, and then here, let me go ahead and write the notes out for you guys. So it's going to be unsharp mask is the name of the mask. Amount is really how much contrast it's going to add. So sharpening is really increasing the contrast around each individual pixels. So I like it to be between, oh, sorry, 100 and 120 percent. That's a good range. Radius is how much the neighboring pixels around it will be filtered. So really with radius, you want to, don't want to go above one. So you want less than one um, or one and less. That's the really important part. And then threshold is really establishes from shadows to highlights. So I like to keep this between 6 and 10, um, meaning that the really true blacks don't get sharpened, and that's usually where you see noise. So let me go ahead and go back to um, here, amount. I'm going to click on the eye area. Um, and what? let me go ahead and, so like, what does over sharpening look like? So I'm, I'll go to like 120, and the best um, threshold, I'm gonna move that up to 10. Um, radius over sharpening, if you notice how it looks like you can see a white halo effect, that's over sharpening. That's what we don't want to happen. We actually just want our sharpening to look like it's just a little bit, you know, you see it just happening, a little bit of sharpness happening. So, um, put my radius at one. I might move my mount up just a little bit higher. Um, and then hit OK. So that's unsharp mask. And the great thing about this being a smart layer, smart filter, is it lay, lists it right here. I can double click on this and it'll open it up. So if I feel like it's too strong, I can do that. So I'm just going to turn unsharp mask off and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use smart filter or smart sharpen. That's another sharpening. So I'm going to go up to, um, let me type, I'll type out the notes. Um, sharpen with smart filter. Again, we're going to go filter, sharpen, and this time we're going to pick sharp, smart sharpen. Um, this is one that is taught in digital imaging recently. It's a pretty new one. Um, my re, uh, reduced noise, I'm going to keep that at 5%. The amount, again, I'm going to go between 100 and 200%. I find that to be the best. Radius is less, um, less than 1. Um, remove lens blur. And then um, reduce noise between 10 to 20%. And then you're going to expand your shadows and highlights. And what's nice about Smart Sharpen is you can um, kind of play with this a little bit more. The fade, I, I just recommend keeping the numbers the same in both the shadows and the highlights. So 50 to 55%, tonal 50%, and then your radius 10 to 25. Um, so those are the settings for using Smart Sharpen. I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go up to Filter. Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. Um, again, I'm going to click kind of on the face to bring that up. Um, amount, uh, let's go a little higher. Reduce noise, um, I can go up to 20 if I want to. Remove um, lens blur. And then open up, this is the shadows and highlights. And I'm just really going to move that fade to about 50% on both. Um, and then I can also go in, I'm going to make the radius like 10. I just, whatever you decide, just try to match them up on both. And then I go ahead and hit, I can do preview, I can hit OK, and now you'll see that um, Smart Sharpen will now be listed under my Smart Filters. So it's another option that I have. Um, it's going to take a moment to process because I'm asking it to do a lot of things. So, do, 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 do. so that's Smart Sharpen. You can use that filter as well. Um, and then the last one I want to show you, which is actually the one I like to use, is High Pass. Um, why I like High Pass is that it only sharpens the edges of the picture, the outline, rather than sharpening everything. So for High Pass, um, this one's located different. You're going to go to Filter, Other, select High Pass. 
um, and you adjust the pixels so you see the edges of the image. Um, you are going to change your blending mode to this one to overlay or soft light. Either one works. They kind of say overlay is for objects, products, things, and soft light are for people. And um, so yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for a second. I'm going to go up to filter. Oh, I turned off that layer. Go up to filter, go to other, high pass. And yes, you're going to see that it's black and white. It looks, you're like, oh no, it's black and white. Um, and really, that's too much. I usually find it to be, you know, less than three, where you can see just the edges of the hair. That's pretty good. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and hit um, soft light. And I will go into 100%. And you can kind of see before and after. Just um, why I like to add sharpening when I'm doing composite work is it helps fix any um, blurriness that happens in the composite, but also it will um, just blend it a little bit more. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save this file as a TIFF. Um, and then you can upload it to the photo server when you're done with it or onto Moodle. Um, we're still working out the details on that as well. So, um, but that is the steps on how to edit and combine two portraits into one to make a totally new person that looks amazing. So if you guys have any questions, obviously you can, um, uh, let me know and, um, I can try my best to help you. So have a good day guys.